everyone, it's Joanna here from Inspired by Stamping and today we're going to take a look at Polychromo Pencils 101. We are going to focus on a few techniques. I'm going to share with you paper, pencils, blending tools, and then we're going to do a little bit of blending 101. Today we're going to be focusing on our fresh bouquet that just was released last week. This is a beautiful large stamp set to practice your coloring on and there are some really great sentiments that come with them as well. Okay, so we're just going to get started here right away. Just get right into it. And first I'm going to share with you my set of Faber-Castell polychromo pencils. And we're going to look at some different forms of paper that I just love and I think that will help you create a beautiful um, experience. We're also using some antique linen distress ink and just going to share with you some different blending techniques too. So here they are. Here's my Faber Castells. When I first purchased them I got the 60 uh, count pencils and just because I couldn't afford it. So over the last year I've bought a couple pencils every few months and now I have almost the entire collection. And here they come just like this all beautiful and organized in color. I love the rainbow effect of these. So these are my yellow, reds, and pinks. And I also have my purple, blues, and then starting to turn into greens underneath. So here they are, just looking beautiful. I love them in rainbow color. They are exceptionally hard pencils. They are an oil-based pencil, not a watercolor pencil. So it's a different form of blending and coloring. And I'll show you some of my favorite tips in just a little bit. Just sharpen them and away they go. They never break unless you're pushing super, super hard, which you should never do with pencils anyways. So let's look at some of my blending tools that I have. I've been blending for about a year now, trying to figure out different ways to use blending tools. My favorite is the Prismacolor White. I really, really love that. And I also love the Luminous White too, to blend some of my colors. I don't recommend the um, Polychromos White Pencil. I find that it doesn't do a very good job blending. I'm also using the Prismacolor um, Colorless Blender. That is very beautiful and I love using it for different forms of projects. But my ultimate favorite is the Odorless Mineral Spirits. This is wonderful. Yes, I understand that it is a little toxic, but it's odorless. You just pop up with the top and away you go and just use a little bit. I recommend you guys use an oil brush or an acrylic brush. The tips are different. Make sure you don't use a watercolor brush because they are softer and they won't be blending as beautifully. Okay, next we're going to look at paper. So let's look at some paper that we have right now. I went out and I bought a whole bunch of paper. I was so excited about it. I wanted to have a look at everything that we are, um, would make a beautiful picture in a bouquet. Here right now we have just regular cardstock. Yes, it works beautifully. It's lovely. If you're going for one layer and you just want to quickly color, it will work. It will look absolutely gorgeous. You can see right here, it just blends beautifully and it's very, very nice. But then I went to Michael's with my 50% off coupon and I thought, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm just going to buy all sorts of different kinds of paper to see which one is the best. And I, for this video specifically, I really wanted to make sure that I was getting you guys the best. So I bought Arches, Strathmore, and the Strathmore colored pencil. And I decided to give it a color. So on Saturday... I decided here's the one that my favorite one is the Fabri Fabriano <laughs> watercolor hot pressed. It's my absolute favorite. I love it. So I colored all day last week, Saturday, trying to figure out which one. Uh, obviously, I got a bit frustrated and I stopped. <laughs> so this one is the colored pencil one. I found that I could not get a very beautiful layer over layer and I found it very hard. I ended up burnishing, which is just kind of blending with pressure. I found that it really didn't work very well. The Bristol, make sure that if you're going to go out and get this, that it has a vellum surface. This is 
beautiful paper to color to make cards. This is it right here and it is lovely and just so beautiful and I think it doesn't do as many layers as what I found with the watercolor paper but I really found it. I used arches the other day too and I colored with it. Not very good. I was very frustrated with it. It didn't produce as beautiful as the other watercolor paper that I bought. Now I bought this Artistico beautiful paper, huge. I'm so sorry I can't even get it into the <laughs> camera, but it is massive. I bought it online so that I can cut it myself. It's smooth, extra white, and make sure it's hot pressed. So it's very nice and smooth. You get a thousand layers over layers of layers of coloring on it. You can keep coloring for ages. And that's what I used with the picture below that this is just a little piece of it it's super smooth super white and I really highly recommend it for your big projects that you are going to be doing so here are some of my other things that I work on I practice 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 with coloring books I love Johanna Basford's coloring books they are my absolute favorite this is the artist edition I think it's so much fun to color. It's so relaxing. I use the Secret Garden one too. You can color. It just teaches you different ways of blending. You can use different um, colors together. And it's just a great way of just practicing. Right now I'm working on some of the artist editions. Let me just grab it, the Secret Garden. Nice and big. It's got really, really heavy paper. You can use the mineral oil on it to blend, and it just creates a very beautiful image. Uh, Lost Ocean, I'm doing that one right now for 2017. I just finished this one. You probably saw it on Instagram. I finally just finished it. And it's just a great way you could just practice and learn different um, color combinations and just, you know, practice, practice, practice makes perfect. So you got to keep practicing, and that is just a great way of doing it. So I wanted to share with you setting up how I set up my pictures. So when I first start and I lay down my ink, there's two ways that I do it. If I'm going to be working with super dark ink, I um, use the antique linen and I just stamp once. And here it is on the side, I just use my color combinations. So when I'm coloring and I have to step away and make dinner or take the kids to one of their sporting events, sometimes I'll come back and go, I have no idea what color combination that I'm using. So I just grab a scrap piece of paper and lay down the color and make sure I write down the numbers that I'm using. See this one right here, I did with the oranges. And three days later, I came back to this side just to finish it. And it took me a bit longer to finish, but I had this piece of paper that just really, really helped me here. And I just think that it's just so important and I wanna make sure that you guys do it too. I hope to make a big, um, you know, a big one that has all the colors I've ever com combined together, but maybe I'll do that one day or maybe I won't, I'm not sure. So let's keep going here. We're gonna move on to stamping and blending. Okay, so let me just get this stuff out of the way here. And I just wanted to grab some of my antique linen and some cardstock. So I just wanted to make sure that I point out here that I love antique linen. It is my absolute favorite. And I really think that you guys will love that too. But there's some things that I do that I don't really share. If I'm working with a dark color pencils, I usually leave it pretty dark because your pencils will cover it up. But if I'm going to be stamping and using yellows and light pinks and beautiful light greens, what I do is I ink up my stamp set first and I grab some scrap paper like I have over on the right. And I'll just stamp that image once and then I'll stamp my real image, the one that I'll be working with on the cardstock here. So I'll just double it up and I'll stamp again just like that. And that will produce a super light image. You won't be even really able to see it right now. You probably can't, but it's there and it's just really nice because I can see it and I can quickly cover it up with my pencils and you will not 
see that at all if I use the light colors. So I wanted to make sure that I showed you guys that too because that's really important because sometimes when you're coloring, you will not, um, you will see your line work and you don't want that. So I just wanted to share a little tip on that. So let's get into coloring. I just wanted to share how to blend. Okay, so we're going to be blending now. I'm going to share you a few little techniques on how I blend well, the hydrangeas, and then I'll share a couple more little techniques with the leaves and the beautiful peonies. So I'll write down the colors that I'm using today. I'm using three colors for the hydrangeas. I'm just going to grab my pencil sharpener. I just use this little tiny one to carry it around. It's so crucial to have a super point on your pencils. Don't let your pencils go dull. If you do, you'll see more white marks and those are just the um, tooth in the paper. And so you want to have a high tip point so you can get inside those teeth on that paper. And that's one of the important things of blending. So let me just get super close here and grab my artwork here. And I always start with dark. And I know some people are gonna get, ah, oh, what are you doing? You're using dark first. We're stamping, so this is a bit different. We're going to be covering up those those ink marks from that um, stamp set, so we're not going to be able to see it. So we need to create a little bit of an outline so we know where we're going as we're covering that up. So what we'll do is we'll lay down a little bit of a dark, and then we'll lay down with a different color. Here I'm grabbing a different color, and I'm just going to put down. But then I'm going to go over that other color, that darker color with my lighter pencil and I'm blending it in as I'm going along. So here I am grabbing my light and then you can see I'm just going around the edge but then I'm going into that darker color with my lighter pencil as well. And you're gonna press extremely light. I cannot tell you how important that is. If you press down hard, you're gonna burnish your paper. And what that means is that you're not gonna be able to put layer over layer over layer of pencil coloring. Here I'm using the Colorless Blender. I absolutely love this. It's so beautiful. It blends perfectly. You don't have to press down hard, but it, I do find that when you do that, you don't get as many layers. I do not use the Colorless Blender either on my coloring books because I find that the black ink will actually smear into my color work and I don't like that either. So again, just laying down my dark and then laying down a little shade lighter and then getting another one and laying it down with a little shade lighter. Now I'm using the um, Bristol Strathmore Vellum Surface paper here. So this is a beautiful paper. I will be using this, it's cheap. I got it for $5 at Michael's. I used a 50% off coupon. I think it was just beautiful. I'll be using the other pencil or the other paper for um, more detailed, bigger project work because it is quite expensive. Here's another form of blending. I, you just take your white Prismacolor and you blend over the entire project itself. And that's just another form of blending that you can do. Here I am laying down again the dark, just kind of going in the grain that I've always been saying. It's the same kind of work. Follow your pencil lining to the grain of your artwork. Going in with a little shade lighter here, just making sure that we're just a little lighter. One shade so you can't hardly even tell. And going in again and making sure that I'm going over that whole shade. So I'm blending as I'm going out a little bit too. And then just taking the light and going again. You can go just picking up that little darker edges and blending them in with my lighter. So we actually have two layers there. Now I'm going to grab some of that odorless minerals and I just love this stuff. You don't need a whole lot. You just get a little bit on your brush and it dries super fast and you can just blend it and look how pretty that is and you don't even need a whole lot and you just need a little. And the great thing about it is it doesn't hurt your hand and sometimes when I'm using the blenderless pencil, I find that my hand starts to cramp up. But when you're using your brush like this, it's light work. It's very easy. And then you can apply a second layer over it, which even is better. So you can go layer over layer over layer on this. I did three layers on this vellum paper, but I think you could even just go with one. It's just really beautiful paper and you just keep coloring over and over and over again. And then the second layer of the dark, little bit darker. 
just kind of blending it in. And then there you have it. Okay, so here we're back again one more time. I have some of this beautiful watercolor paper. I will leave a list of all the supplies that I'm using today. Now I'm just gonna stamp. We're gonna be using a dark colors today. I'm gonna be using hot pink, blues, and dark greens. And I just wanted to share with you, just wanted to blend the peony and also the green leaves for you and how I do that. So I really wanna make sure I'm showing you all three areas of this beautiful fresh bouquet flower. And I really want you guys to see everything that I'm doing. So here we are again, gonna lay down our darkest color and just where we think that that will be where the light will hit. So we wanna take our darker area over closer to the bouquet and then we'll go lighter. So here I am just grabbing my lighter color and just blending over, pushing a little bit of that lighter color into that darker color, going over as you can see, blending it in, and now we're gonna go over the lighter. Making sure that I go over, directly over that ink line too, because I'm trying to hide it. So we're gonna go over the whole entire thing. Now I'm just gonna grab some of this Mineral Spirits again and get a little bit on there, not a whole lot. Just gonna blend it in softly and as you can see, it's already starting to blend beautifully. It's starting to take form. And now we'll go back over and do a second layer. Going over it with our darker, and it, you don't have to wait or anything. It's, it dries almost immediately. Going with the darker. Now we're gonna go with a little medium. Oh, I'm gonna go super dark here. Just getting that little edge line over there, just super dark. I think it just contrasts just a little bit better. Switching and just going over again. See how it's just starting to take into a beautiful shape. And with our little light, our lightest color and going over everything just beautifully. Now I'm gonna grab my Prismacolor white here and I'm just gonna add a little bit more highlights. And while I was doing it, I thought, oh, you know what? I think I wanna lighten this whole leaf up because I thought it was just a little bit too dark. But you can see how it just all blended together and all those layers that just look gorgeous with that white, beautiful pencil. And just going in and just adding just a little bit more dark shading here. And you can do as many layers as you want. So here I'm just going over with my third layer, grabbing a little bit lighter color and just keep blending and shading. But I think you could have stopped at the second and you could keep playing with this as many times as you want. You can put as many layers as you want because this paper is absolutely beautiful. And just shading it again with a blending it all in with that light, light color. And look how beautiful that looks. Sorry for seeing my head. I just wanted to make sure that that looked okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna bring it down here. Now we're going to switch over to our pink. Okay, and I grabbed four colors for my pink here, and this is how I colored this. Adding again that darkest layer down at the very bottom here, going along the form, making sure my brush strokes are in the same direction as the flower petals are going. You can add some curvature here too, but this pretty much went straight up and down this petal here. And just kind of following where that petal is, making my own judgment as where I should make the um, veins of this beautiful flower petal. And just coloring it in, going in with a little bit and then with that lighter color, going over that darker color just a little bit and that helps blend that in. And you can see it's already blending beautifully. Then adding just a little bit lighter and you can see it's already just beautifully taking shape. And you could just keep doing that over with all the petals there and you'll quickly have a beautiful, beautiful petal. And you can stop here. I mean, look how beautiful that is. You just need to add some mineral spirits and color it or use your beautiful, you know, odorless or colorless blender and you can just blend it and then stop. But I always like to cre create more and more layers. I find that it gives a richer image. But there you have it. You can do either way. You can do it with white pencil, um, a colorless blender, or you can do it with um, mineral spirits. Either one is works really well. All of them work beautifully. I do recommend that you try what works best for you. Um, each person has their personal preference. It just depends on what I'm working with. I typically like to stay away from the 
colorless blender when I'm working with black ink or when I'm working with a dark ink because I do find that it does smear. So I do stay away from that. But you can, you know, try, give it a try, see what you like. And here you can see that now I'm putting down that second layer, how it's just richer. It's just brighter and richer and just, just beautiful. And you can grab your um, white. Here I am with the white, just kind of adding some highlights at the top, lightening it down, and just blending it in with the white. And you can see how beautiful that looks. And if you want, you could do all three, you, like I just have done. It just depends on what you want to do, how you want to, or what you want to use, what you have available to you. What I did find is that that tip of that brush there needs to make sure that you clean that off when you switch colors because you can bring in a blue color or a you know green color from your leaves into your pink and you don't want that. So sometimes you that does happen. So here I'm just kind of going over it again for a third layer. And then there you have it. You just keep coloring and coloring as long as you want and as many layers as you want. You can use any form of colors with this beautiful stamp set. And I do want to show you what we're going to be doing next week. We're going to be taking our pencils and coloring them on craft paper. So I really hope you enjoy. Um, come back and join me for our part two coloring on craft paper. So if you have any questions or comments, don't forget to leave me a message. I'm always here to help. And I look forward to seeing you next week as we color on craft paper.